Hey everyone, Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. How are you all doing today? Today is Saturday, July 31st, 2021, last day of July. This year is definitely moving on, moving quickly. I can't believe how fast it's moving. Welcome to another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. We take a look at the charts, we look at stocks, we look at indexes. I try to show you what's been happening in the market and give you an idea of what may be coming down the pike. I try to give you some examples of support and resistance, uh, chart patterns, using moving averages, things like that to try to help you become a better trader. This is what I do. This is how I make most of my uh, trade recommendations in our newsletter, Smart Option Seller. We sell put options. We're looking for stocks that are bottoming out and starting to turn higher. And that's what I do. That's what we do. And I base most of those decisions on how the stocks look on the charts. So that's what I'm trying to do here today for you. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at what's happening in the market. Although today is Saturday, I recorded this yesterday, Friday, July 30th. As you can see, the numbers over here, these are the e-mini futures markets. The numbers are still moving. Bid-ass prices are moving on some of these stocks. The market just closed a few minutes ago. And yet the futures uh, market is open for another uh, hour or so until, or is it? Uh, another two hours till 6 p.m. or 5 15 p.m. Eastern time I think they're open till so we got a little bit more action going on in the aftermarket but anyway let's take a look and see what's happening let's open up right to the uh, the Nasdaq e-mini futures market and see what's happening it's a pretty light week I'd say as far as movement had a little down move let me open this up a little so you can see it this is uh, my chart this is a daily bar chart that I use every one of these long lines here is one day's worth of trading the top of the bar is the high of the day the low of the bar the the bottom of the bar is the low of the day and you have these two little dash marks on the bar one on the left side one on the right side the left dash mark is where that particular stock or index opened for the day and the dash mark on the right hand side of the bar is where the stock or index closed for the day so this was the range for the week Pretty small range, not a lot happening, although we had a lot of big name companies putting out earnings this week. So I'm surprised that the market remained very subdued as it did. NASDAQ, a little bit more movement only because we had a lot of big name players announcing earnings. Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, PayPal, companies like that have had, you know, that could help, that could move a pretty big after earnings which would typically move the index is pretty good but you know not a lot of, not a lot of movement other than Amazon which dropped about $300 a share uh, between yesterday's close or, or I say Thursday's close to Friday's session that's a huge move $300 for for Amazon but otherwise the indexes themselves which has made up a lot of different companies didn't move all that much so where are we where do we stand well I'd like to teach you about what I look for on the uh, in the markets and, and how the charts look. Since we're mostly looking for bullish trades, we like to see stocks and indexes that are moving upwards from bottom left to upper right. That shows you it's a upside moving market. I have three indicators on my charts. I have a 20 blue day, a 20, a blue 20 day simple moving average. I have a red 50 day simple moving average and I have a green 200 day simple moving moving average down here I have an RSI which is an overbought oversold indicator uh, the defaults are 70 and 30 that would entail overbought or oversold levels I bump mine out to the 80 20 levels because I really want to know if a stock or an index is really overbought or really oversold so you can see how the RSI kind of meanders between the two wide ranges and just because something gets overbought doesn't mean it's necessarily the stock is due for a pullback right then and there it's just telling me that hey this this market's a little overheated keep an eye on it so here we have the Nasdaq e-mini futures right here and it's definitely in a nice uptrend and when you have a stock that's in an uptrend uh or, or a downtrend, they will typically hug the 20-day or the 50-day moving average. You can see the NASDAQ has been hugging this 20-day moving average for a while. It will typically act as support as long as the uptrend is still intact. So when, when the index or stock pulls back, it will typically pull back to one of these lines, the 20-day or 50-day, and then bounce. You can see the 20-day has been holding the NASDAQ pretty good. So 
you know, things are still looking strong for the market. Earnings have been real good, you know, except for Amazon. Most most companies are beating estimates and still projecting out for the, you know, the rest of the year. Things look pretty good. So that's that's what will keep the market moving higher. If companies are saying, you know, the future looks bright, then typically stock prices will follow. Let's take a quick look at the E-mini S&P 500 futures, and then we'll look at the SPY, the E-mini S&P 500 right here, this, this week right here. Very tight range, not a lot of activity. So there really wasn't much happening, not much for, for us to do except sit and watch for the most part. As you can see, nice uptrend still, and also bouncing either off the 20-day or 50 day and I and I tell my students you know if you're looking to get in on a bullish trade that's already made a move then it's better to wait for it to pull back there are always pullbacks normal ebbs and flows to the market you can wait for a pullback to the 20 day or 50 day if it pulls back to the 20 day <clears throat> you know maybe dip your toe in buy a few shares because if it keeps pulling back then you can buy some more shares once it bounce bounces off the the 50 day or you can just completely wait until you see a bounce off the 50 day. Sometimes it pulls back to the 50 day. Sometimes it doesn't. So, you know, it's up to you to decide what you want to do. Let's take a look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the, for the, uh, SP 500. This is what, this is what, if we were going to trade something, this is what we would trade. It acts just like a stock. As you can see, I have past price, past patterns on here to kind of gauge and show us where the stock may be moving next. The W pattern that I have here is pretty bullish pattern, especially when it comes from down low. But even if it makes a W pattern up here, it still is considered a bullish pattern once it gets above the resistance line. We have congestion patterns, triangle patterns that help us gauge when a stock may be ready to, to bounce. We have this congestion pattern, which pretty much means once you got this uptrending line and it's hitting a flat top. Once it blasts through the flat top, it should keep going in that same direction, which is what it did. We had a little pullback last week, you know, that last Thursday, Friday, and Monday, we had this nice little pullback bounce right on the 50 day moving average here. So if you're looking to get in, this could have been, this would have been a nice point of entry and obviously the market has moved up. So as far as where, I, I see the market going. The market still looks strong. There's really nothing to derail it. Uh, yes, we have the COVID Delta variant, which is wreaking havoc, at least here in the U.S. People who are not vaccinated are getting sick. This is a more contagious type of, of the COVID. Um, and, 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 it's, and, it, and it could make you feel even worse uh, if you get it. So uh, this is what's going through unvaccinated persons right now. And uh, even if you've been vaccinated, you can still get COVID, but you won't get as sick. So, you know, about half of the, the U.S. Has, has been completely vaccinated, trying to get that number higher. But as far as businesses are concerned, because that's, that's really what moves the market, as long as companies are still producing good profits and projecting good numbers for the future, stock prices will still go up. The stock market really is the only place to get any return on your money. So people are still heavily invested. They want to get on board. So that extra demand also pushes prices higher. There's really nothing for me to say that, you know, the next bear market is about to happen because there's nothing out there that's suggesting a bear market should happen. So we keep going along until the market tells us otherwise. The market's going up until something comes along and, and pushes it down. We, we, we remain on the long side and we keep selling put options if we can find them. Uh, so that's the SPY. Let's take a quick look at the the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Had, uh, last week had just you know made all time new highs, hitting above thirty five thousand for the first time. But you can see it's still kind of hugging on this resistance top right here. And you know if you want to draw the ascending triangle, the ascending triangle is where the bottoms are you know trending. The, the 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 trend is up but it's but it's hit this resistance up here okay so this this little triangle is what's called an ascending tri triangle pattern you're getting the movement to the upside but it just can't blast through here but once it does it should go pretty hard okay because it keeps popping 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 up against this resistance it's trying real hard and eventually, hopefully, it'll get through it. It might get knocked back down again, but we have this ascending line right here that should catch any 
down movement and then it'll blast through you know that's just the way way i see it so it could meander around here a little bit more wait for the rest of the earnings to come out over the next few weeks and then we may just get going you know summer is pretty slow anyway as it is uh for trading and once you know late august early september when everyone's getting back into it we could probably see this thing move pretty hard if it hasn't done it so by then okay so that's the dow jones things look good uh waiting for the you know maybe next week we'll have more of uh, a, a wider range so let's take a look at some individual stocks see what happened let's pull up amazon first because that had a huge move um came out with earnings thursday after the close and then friday it had its huge move down so let's take a quick look at amazon it had been in this wide long channel for a very long time stretching back to last summer june july of 2020 finally broke above the resistance here came back down just slightly under the resistance line you can see right here but then powered back up but then here we got the we got the earnings right here created this huge gap right here. A gap is when a market closes at one level and opens at a completely different level the next day. It typically happens every day in the market, but this one's pretty dramatic. You know, this is like a $300 gap window right here. Eventually should be filled. Most gaps are filled, meaning eventually Amazon will start to move back up and it, it will, this number, this space will be filled up over time. You know, as long as Amazon produces uh, good earnings next quarter. So for now, there's a lot of damage that has been done. So I can see Amazon probably meandering around here for a while. People have to lick their wounds. You know, the buyers have to have a little conviction to, to want to enter on the long side again. So we can see meandering here for a little bit before people are okay with buying it up again. So this was pretty big move, Amazon. Let's take a look at Apple. We have Apple, uh, which you know has hit all-time new highs, near uh, $150 a share. Hit that two times recently, right up here, all-time new highs. So some may say this is a double top. Double top is when you have uh, a new high, a little dip, and then a new high again. Some people will say, well, that's it. Apple's never going higher again. Uh, here's a double top, and it should knock it all the way back down. I disagree. And yeah, we may we may come we may stay off the highs for a short period of time, but as long as Apple keeps pumping out iPhones and people keep buying iPhones and and, and computer Mac computers, you know Apple will keep going up over time. I mean, it took it a little while to to get get its groove back here, but look at this nice move it's had from 125 all the way up to 150. So it has to di digest this nice little move could be a little congestion right here you know we can always try to draw some patterns here we've got this little congestion here so it, it, it it's getting tighter tighter ranges and then eventually it'll blow out one way or the other hopefully uh, for those that are long it'll go up to the upside some will say okay well you've got the you've got the double top resistance right here so you got a little resistance right here and so the next thing that apple will need to do is bounce back up and get above the resistance line to, to make more all-time new highs, or it could meander for a bit. So Apple uh, congestion, congesting right now, it's had a nice little move, had a nice $25 move, and it's taking a little breather here, and we'll see what happens. Um, most likely, if um, you know the numbers have been good, Apple had a pretty good quarter, had earnings come out, numbers look pretty good. So people are digesting those numbers, and I think eventually Apple will start to go up again. Uh, might have to give it a little time. We'll see. Okay, so that's Apple, Google, of course, just is a monster, just keeps going up, 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 up. There's really not much to say other than it's in this incredible uptrend, has been hugging the 20-day moving average. So on any pullback, it's going to pull back to the 20-day here, pull back to just about the 50-day. So anytime you're looking to get long a stock and you're and you're looking at your, your moving averages, you know, you can wait for a pullback, wait for the little bounce off the pullback, and then you can get on board. You know, that's if you want to time your entries. Okay. Uh, what other stocks? Tesla. Always look at Tesla. Tesla still um, just kind of in this range here, but has been in these, these congestion patterns. Looks like it's just about ready to possibly break out here and move, 
move above seven hundred dollars again. Uh, you know, I'm not a big player of Tesla stock. I love selling put options on Tesla because you can sell some pretty juicy put put options well out of the money. Give yourself a lot of buffer. Um, for downside action. So Tesla as itself, as far as trading the stock, it's a little erratic for me. I don't trade the stock, but but I do like to sell the put options because you can get some good payouts there. Uh, but as far as where I think it's going, you know, it's in this this triangle congestion pattern. It looks like maybe here it, it, it got up to the upside above the line here. So maybe it'll keep going uh, for any of those that have interest. Let's take a look at my list here see what other stocks we'd like to take a look at um to, 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 to microsoft still uh looks pretty strong had earnings this week too has been in this uptrending channel hovering up here um you know maybe just congest congesting for a little and probably will continue on to new highs uh let me see what other stocks intel mm, nike Nike's all-time new highs again, looking pretty strong. Uh, that had a gap right here as well. I don't know if that'll ever get filled. That's that's a gap to the downside. So here on Nike, the gap was created by Nike going up. So you got this big hole here. Um, you know, Nike, there would have to be some really bad news for Nike to come back down and drop all the way down here to fill this gap. Not sure if we'll see that happen. And for those of you that are long, you don't want to see that either. AMD. Okay, so let's talk about AMD here. I love AMD as a company. You know, we tried to sell some put options right here when it had this nice, you know, $10 pullback. We we're trying to sell put options. We didn't get filled, missed the price. And I'm a little upset about that because look how AMD just took off without us involved. And that, that makes me angry. Went from $85 all the way up, 86 all the way up to 106 Just powered higher this week, had earnings. It's a big move for AMD in just a couple days. Doesn't usually move that far that quickly. But, you know, congrats to those that were long. Uh, I, I didn't get involved. We missed it. Tried to get in here, and it just didn't work out for us. And obviously, it moved without us. So I'm a little upset about that. But I do still like AMD. Uh, I'm going to wait for some kind of pullback uh, because I don't want to get in up here. Could be getting into some overbought areas based on the RSI. So I'll bide my time. I'll wait for a little bit of a pullback, see what happens on AMD. Looked at Apple, looked at Amazon. Netflix still in this long channel here nothing happening with netflix i think i may have mentioned this last week if you like to sell iron condors which, which is a dual call credit spread and a put credit spread you sell them both iron condor it works great on meandering sideways stocks could be good for those of you that, that like to sell iron condors procter and gamble had a pretty good move had some good earnings so you know it was in this sort of uh sideways channel and has, has started to move higher um, what else that i can show you that's worthy of of um let's take a look at a downtrending stock we looked at i think we looked at clark's last week so yes here's clorox okay here's what i want to show you what i mean by the market will tell you when it that when it starts a new trend. So here at the beginning of the pandemic, Clorox was in this nice major uptrend. Everyone was buying Clorox wipes and then it started to push down. So it entered this new downtrending channel. There's a point where you have to say, okay, the, the uptrend is over. You know, it could have bounced all this time and then moved up again, but but it kept moving lower. So at some point you have to say, okay, this this uptrend has ended and now a new trend, downtrend has started. And you can see, it it gets re, it gets knocked back down every time it started to come along the 20 day or 50 day moving average. Now here had a nice up move. I'm not sure if that was an earnings announcement or not. I can't remember that far back early in the year, but it was in the downtrend, popped above it and got back into this downtrend, this long downtrend. Started to make a move higher, little uptrend here, but still we have this long downtrend line containing everything. Now here is potential for Clarks to possibly start to move higher for good starting to form a base over here I'd like to see a little bit more action if it you know it might bounce we've got this little uptrending line here so it might bounce here and continue to go so I think Clarks could be starting to turn the corner here maybe making like a nice little rounded bottom and might start to move up I'm going to wait a little bit more time for Clarks to see if it's it's making a, a move 
higher for good. Um, what other downtrends can I show you? Um, Look at Tesla. The the healthcare stocks have been doing pretty good. Eli Lilly, Bristol Myers, all the healthcare stocks looking pretty good. Pfizer, I like this sector. We sell the XLV. We sell we sell put options on the XLV, which is the healthcare ETF. It's composed of all these healthcare companies. We've been selling put options. I like it. Look strong. Continue to go up. You know, uh, it, you know, as long as the the healthcare companies, pharmaceuticals are going up. See how it keeps bouncing nicely off the twenty day and or fifty day at the extremes. I like the I like the healthcare stocks. Um, let's see, Costco, McDonald, Costco just keeps killing it. Costco, great. McDonald's gotten above this this little channel. See, this is what you want to do, people. You want to find these patterns and wait for the 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 breakout through the pattern and hope that the the breakout continues. And if it doesn't, then you get your set your stops. If you if you if you buy on the breakout, then you set your stop somewhere a little bit back below the channel if you want to stop yourself out or you wait for it to see if it'll break down below the either one of these moving averages. So you don't have to take a lot of risk on these trades, but you know, make sure you set yourself set a stop for yourself. Pepsi's looking pretty good earnings. Um, just keeps going strong. Had this congestion pattern and then finally moved higher. What else do we like in here? Twitter is a stock that we've been playing too. Sold some put options on Twitter. What I like about Twitter, I like this uptrend that it's that it's on. You can draw lines. Now you always like to try to connect the lows, and then you can connect you can connect some of the highs. Come on, and then you can form this little channel. So now you get a better visual representation of of what the stock looks like, what kind of pattern it's making. Okay, so. It should keep bouncing off off the uptrending line, which means it's, it'll keep going higher. So, you know, it bounce off the the twenty day moving average. So, I like Twitter here. Things looking good for Twitter. Um, you know, that's really about it. Not much else. I, I don't really like to look at these uh, these uh, meme stocks anymore. GameStop's not doing much. AMC's not doing much. The Bitcoin stocks, Riot. And Mara not doing much. That's because Bitcoin's not really going anywhere. All right. So, you know, that's really the assessment of the stock market. What I really want to do is just show you what I look for on the charts to help you become a better technical analysis trader. That's what we do. One last time, let's take a look at the, the SPY for next week. Range was real tight this week. Um, but the market continues to go up, waiting for the, the moving averages to load up here. Um Anyway, I, I like the market staying staying strong, staying long. There's really nothing to derail this thing uh, that that I can foresee. But you know, you let the mar let the market tell you where things are going. All right, well that's it for this Saturday synopsis of the market. I hope this has been helpful for you. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this. Give me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Send me an email. Love hearing from you. Let's quickly go to our website, Smart Options Seller. We sell put options. We sell put option spreads. Get a copy of our free Put Selling Basics ebook. Go to our website. Click on here, Put Selling Basics. Put in your name and email address. We'll send you a free copy. Also, a couple things that we do. Services tab right here. We have our two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need a little help getting to the next level. All right, so that's it for me today. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.